today for the warm-up, their job was to match up. Two of these graphs are exponential growth, and two of these graphs are exponential decay. So which is which? If you guessed that this first one right here is decay, you're right, because the arrow is going down and the numbers are getting smaller. If you guessed that this one was growth, you are right, because the values are getting very big very quick. If you guessed this one right here, this third one was growth, I'm sorry to say you are not right. A lot of people in class wanted to guess that. But this graph right here is exponential decay. And the reason is this. Those numbers are getting closer and closer to equaling zero, even though they're negative the absolute value of them is becoming smaller and smaller and smaller and they're going to keep getting closer and closer to zero. So for that reason they're decay. So now another way you can sort of think of decay is if the numbers are approaching zero if they're becoming smaller. So this last graph down here is growth. I know you might be thinking that the numbers are getting smaller. You're right, but the numbers themselves, so the absolute value of the numbers, are becoming much bigger. And if you want to think about it the other way, they're both getting further and further away from zero. So let's keep that in mind when we go through these notes. This example we're given is a, an exponential function because the numbers are doubling every year. So being, between 60 and 20, it's being multiplied by 2. Between 120 and 240, it's doubling and so on. Okay, I think these numbers over here end up getting messed up, so kind of ignore those. Also, this should go from 65 to 66 to 67 to 68 to 69 to 70, so that was a typo on my point, so I'm sorry about that. Let's look at the format of the function. Whether or not you have growth or decay, you can model it with this function. f of x equals a, where a is a number all by itself, no exponents attached to it, and that's the starting number, or the initial amount. So starting number. On the graph, it's the y-intercept. The next part is the b to the x. The exponent of x is always connected to the b, which is the base. That tells you how quickly your amount is growing or decaying. So we say it's the growth or decay rate. Up in this example, since it was being multiplied by 2, I think I wrote a 20, I meant to write a 2, um, that rate would be 2 because it's doubling. If something was being tripled, multiplied by 3, then that base would be 3. And then the exponent right here, you'll always use the letter on your um, calculator, that x variable, to type that in by the caret, and that is how many times or how much time has gone by, or the number of times that you will double your values or triple your values. So this table right here is going to show us how to graph f of x equals 2 to the x. So I already typed it into the calculator, into y equals. I went to the table, so second graph, and I copied these numbers from the table. Now maybe you uh, see a 0.25 and a 0.5 here instead, but we're going to go ahead and graph these. When you go to do your homework problems, you're going to be responsible for making your own table just like this, and I would recommend going from negative 2 to 3 for your x values, and then looking in the table and copying those down, and then drawing your own graph and plotting the points. So I'm going to go ahead and plot negative 2 1 fourth, so that'll be like a quarter of the way up. Negative 1 half, a half of the way up. 0 over 1 up. And if you notice in that function, the a value that would be in front of the number b to the x, so 2 is the base to the exponent, the number that would be in front of it would be a 1. It's not there, but... If it was there, it would be a 1, which matches up with the fact that our y-intercept is 1. So there it is, right there. And I'll keep plotting the other points. 1 over 2 up, 
2 over 4 up, and 3 over 9 up. So there's the exponential graph for that. You'll be able to tell just from an equation if it's exponential growth or decay. It's not going to matter if your starting value is positive or negative, because like I showed you on the warm-up, the growth could be above the x-axis or below the x-axis. So the A doesn't matter as far as being growth or decay. What does matter is the B value. If B is greater than 1, you have growth. You'll have decay if A is either positive or negative, you don't really care which, and B is a decimal or a fraction. It has to be between 0 and 1. So if I had, for example, 1.1, that number is a decimal, but 1.1 is bigger than 1, and so it would be growth. So let's use that when we answer these next questions. In example 1a, we need to know what's the base. Well, that question is answered by what number is connected to the exponent? The 1.5. That's the base. What's a in this problem? Well, it'd be a 1 right in front. So since 1.5 is bigger than 1, this will be a growth problem. Now we're going to graph it. So I'd go to y equals, type that into y equals, press second graph, and look at the table. When you do that, you'll see about 0.33, about 0.67, 1, 1.5, 2.25 and about 3.3. .3. So then you'll graph those. Negative 2 and a third of the way up, negative 1 and 2 thirds of the way up, 0 over 1 up, 1, 1.5, 2, 2.25, and 3, 3.3. .3. So this one's getting bigger, not quite as fast as the one that was doubling because 1.5 is a slower growth rate. So when you go to try B, you're going to think about which one's the base. The base is the one connected to the exponent. So the base is 0.8. Since that's a decimal between 0 and 1, this problem's going to be decay. So what does the 30 mean? That means that's your starting number. So go to y equals, type that equation in. Look at the table. You're going to type that in exactly the way you see it, by the way. Don't just type the 0.8 to the x. Type 30 parentheses 0.8 to the x. And when you type that one in, you'll see the values that you type in next to it. I believe it goes about 47, 39, 30... 24, 19, and 15 if you round them. So when we plot those, since those numbers are real big and we have just a few boxes here, rather than counting by ones, this works out nicely if you count on the y-axis by fives. So we'll label 5, 10, 15, 20, 1, 2, 3, 25, 30, it's so little I can barely write it, 35, 40, 45, okay. Now we can plot these, negative 2, 47, negative 1, 39, so almost to 40, 0, 30, which we knew was going to happen because that was the starting number, the y-intercept, 1, 24, 219 and 315. I don't know if I have those on the right dots because I can't really see since it got so smushed together. Um, but that's what the decay function would look like. Remember, on your homework, you are responsible for making your own tables that go from negative 2 to 3, filling in the values, and then drawing your own graphs with the appropriate scales. Sometimes you'll see growth and decay formulas where it, they involve money or when they give you a growth rate expressed as a percent. If you have a problem like that, 
then we're going to use this formula instead. It's the same thing that we saw on the other side. Instead of f of x, we have a of t. Uh, we still have the a, and then it's still b to the x. We're just using a little different notation. So instead of the f of x, we have a of t, which means the final amount. Usually we're talking about money here. A is still the starting number, so the initial amount. And this time, if your rate is a percent, only if your rate is given to you as a percent, you will do 1 plus your rate of increase if it's a plus sign or decrease if it's a minus sign. All right, and I think I just covered up the minus sign with my underlining. Um, but then you will put in the rate expressed as a decimal, all right? So you have to take the percent and put it into decimal form. And then you'll raise that to the t, okay? When you type it in the calculator, you'll still type in the x, but that stands for the number of time periods that goes by. So what's happening to your money over time, over the number of weeks or months or years or whatever you're looking at? So just to rewrite this, if you have r or 1 plus r, it will be a growth problem. And if you have 1 minus your rate, that will be a decay problem. So let's use that information to write our own function in example 2. Tony purchased a rare guitar from 1959 in the year 2000 for $12,000. Now they say that that value is going to increase 14% a year. We're going to use a graph to find when the guitar will be worth $60,000. Well, in order to graph it, we have to write a function. So A of T, the amount of money the guitar is worth over time. We need how much the guitar was initially worth. Well, at the beginning, the investment was $12,000. So that's our number for A. Now we need to put in the either growth rate or decay rate. Since it said the value is increasing, this will be a growth rate, and we will add to 1. What are we going to add? 14% expressed as a decimal. So we move that decimal over two places, and it will be 1 plus 0.14 to the x. Now you could combine those and put um, 1.14 when you go to type it in the calculator, um, or you could just leave it right like that. Type that equation in. If you're trying to see the graph of this, you could use the trace button, but you're probably going to want to make sure that the graph shows up in your window first. If you can't see it, if you're on Zoom 6, you're going to want to try, oops, not Zoom 6, you're going to want to try Zoom 0. Zoom zero is fit, and it will fit the graph so that you can see it in the window. If you press trace, you can keep pressing to the right, to the right, to the right, so it traces it with a little cursor. It'll keep moving over and over and over until you get to $60,000, or you could just look in the table. So if you go to second graph and you look in the table, it's not going to be exact, but you'll see when the values around $60,000, and it happens in this problem between 12 and 13. So for this answer, we could say approximately 12 to 13, or maybe 12 and a half years later, that guitar will be worth $60,000. A pretty good investment. This last problem is kind of depressing because it's a depreciation problem. Some of you are going to be thinking about buying cars sometime soon, maybe. And unfortunately, cars are an investment that do not gain value. They lose value. So let's say you buy a truck, brand new, for $28,000. The value is going to be going down by 9.5% every year. We're going to write a function and then figure out when the truck is only worth $5,000. So we're going to start this off with the amount of the truck over time, the amount of money it's worth. We know that at the beginning it was worth $28,000. So there's our A. 
And our growth, well, our rate is not growth. Our rate is a decay because it's decreasing. So we'll have one minus. And now we need to change that 9.5% to a decimal. So we'll move it one, two places. See how I have that extra loop in front of the 9? That means the rate is 0 0.095. We'll raise that to the x. Well, we'll raise it to the t. When you type it in the calculator, you will type x. All right, so we'll put t. So type that in. You can press zoom 0, zoom fit, to see the graph on the calculator and trace it, or you could look in the table to see when it's only worth $5,000. It's going to be between two other years, and I believe that it's between about 17 and 18. So 17 to 18 years later would be your answer. On your homework, there aren't going to be any homework problems that give you the rates as percents. So for those, don't worry about the one plus and the one minus, just use the numbers that they give you for the rates. For example, if it says it doubles, your rate, so your base, would be two. Okay, good luck.